on the fourth step, we're looking at diatonic scales. Now, diatonic simply means it's a collective name for any seven note scale. The same way pentatonic is a collective for five notes. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And we get to the octave or the tonic. Penta means five. Diatonic means seven. Check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. And then the, the tonic or the octave. We're going to start with the natural minor, which also has a modal name called the Aeolian mode. But natural minor for now, starting position one at fret number five. Fret number five, as on your PDF file. I want you to try and pay attention to the finger allocation. My fingers are numbered to make it easier. And also, please alternate strokes. So you can see my picking hand is alternating on the corner over there. Let's do this. Also known as the A natural minor. We do get other types of minor scales as well, like the harmonic minor and also the melodic minor. But we'll cover those in the later stage. We're now going to go to diagram two on your PDF, which is the E natural minor. It's at fret number 12. You'll see the little 12 on your PDF file. That's the double dot. And you'll notice again, just reinforcing that when you change key, in other words, we're going from the key of A minor to E minor, the shape remains the same. So we're going to take this shape, and we're going to take it up to fret 12 and play the same thing. You'll see it now, and let's go and pay attention to the alternating strokes. Very important there. Let's go. your pinky working okay now before you go to the exercises please make sure you know the a natural minor shape as on the tab shown in the following clip also please note as well that i'm not playing from octave to octave to octave. I'm going past the octave. So as you go to those last two notes, check this out. Those last two notes are still in the key. And I notice some books like stopping there, but that's not really practical because if you're not aware of those two notes being in the same key, you lose some nice applications. And I'm hoping you might recognize that there. And if I didn't know that those two notes are actually part of the key of the natural minor, I wouldn't be able to use them or be aware that I could use them rather. Okay, exercise one, we're looking at ascending triplets with diagram one. You'll notice that it's in blue and red, and I've grouped them into groups of three, so it's easier to see the rhythm placement. Again, alternate strokes. And before I play it through, you'll notice that each group of three, in other words, three blue, three red, three blue, three red. Every group starts on the second note of the preceding triplet. So you're sort of going one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five, six. You got that concept. Okay, now I'm going to take it through the scale the whole way through slowly. I'm going to count this in, so if you want to join me, or when you get to know the scale and you want to join, you are able to. Let's go. One, two, three, four. And we're stopping there because you'll notice it says complete yourself. So I'm hoping by now you're understanding from the previous steps one through to three that from here on you should be able to work out the concepts that I'm trying to lay down. These are all aimed at actually useful exercises that will help you improvise. For example, it could be quite a nice phrase if you wanted to expand it or include it in your improv. Now exercise one double I, we're looking at groups of four now, and again the color coding hopefully makes it nice and easy for you. We're looking at four notes, 
and then again going to the second note of the preceding four notes. So it's now going to go one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. We got that bit of a different rhythm. And let me count you and so you can join me. I'm going to go a little bit further in there so you can see the fingers a bit better. One, two, three, four. stopping there because I want you to be able to work out the remaining of the scale position as you learned earlier and then obviously we want to descend these two so if you went back to exercise one I and you descended you'd have something like this etc etc and descending one point double I and again I want you to work out the remaining of those by yourself. Now, hammer-ons and pull-offs are quite a cool way to get some really fast phrases and licks working for you as well. So exercise 2.1, which is hammer-ons and pull-offs, they're actually in groups of six. So you're going to go, check this out, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But if you watch my picking hand, I'm only picking one note. I'm not going to pick it and then take it away. Watch this. And then I bring it in again for the next. Now I don't suggest you'd really do that. It's just, this is just to demonstrate that only one note for every six is being picked. And it sounds pretty cool when you get the speed going there. Also, if you added a little bit of distortion to it, it sounds quite sweet. You can get something like this, for example, and uh, maybe a little bit of palm damping. aggressive tone too but it also sounds really really cool now on to the last one on this page exercise two double i we're starting the same concept but the same way that we went from the first two exercises from triplets to groups of four we're now going to go from six which is double triplet to eight notes one two three four five six seven eight which is double groups of four so we're trying to keep a theme going here to try and get ideas that we can expand on so exercise two double I, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, notice only the first note is picked. So the whole focus over here is to get this hand working really well, nice and strong, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Hope you got that. Before we get to the backtracks, I'd like to just share two of my favorite riffs that I've learned over the years. Um, they both come from diatonic scales. In fact, if you look at this, the last few notes of the A holding or the natural minor, and I'm playing it now from fret five, so it's the last eight notes. And I'll break it down something like this, the tab will follow. See if you can recognize this. that I've done it in a different key to adapt to the key of A minor um, I've also haven't put the slides in and the bends in that Santana uses I'm hoping you recognize Europa and I've kept it pretty much note for note inside the scale so you can see the origin of the notes in other words that the notes actually come through from the scale itself you can see it there <laughs> Obviously, you can do bends and slides and things like that as well if you wanted to. But this is just to show you that the origin of the notes came from the scale. Another favorite one as well that I really like is um, a Parisian walkways, which is going to be something like this. Obviously, a different key and an octave lower, but once more, directly from your scale. <laughs> Obviously, pad higher. This time using the Phrygian scale. But the important thing over here that I'm trying to share with you is that your notes come from scales, and later we can add the bends. 
and the slides, pull-offs, just strike the note, pre-bends. So you can obviously make it better yourself later. The trick is to realize that all your tunes come from scales. So if I can associate a scale to the tune or melody I'm learning, I automatically know what key I'm in. And it means if I want to add a bit extra in, I can. And that's the nice thing about it. So get to recognize your scales within the tunes that you're learning. In other words, learn your scales. <laughs> okay. We're going to go across to the, the backtrack now and we're going to see what we can have some fun. Some time for you to improvise a bit. <laughs> 